So I, while uh, solving some problem in uh, our journey in the startup, we encountered uh, one use case where we, where we need interactive user, user interfaces. So we wanted to take input from the user in an interactive way so that uh, they don't feel difficult. So one use case was uh, gathering complaints from a user. So if you take any CRM, so people mostly get a ticket and they are later ma mail or email or something like that. So they are followed up on my email. So if you have a phone application where you have like WhatsApp or Telegram and you use it daily, you don't need to install any particular application again. So if you can take leverage of this application and we build it a bot on top of this, then user will feel like it's the same thing and you are not moving outside of what you are using daily. So it's you are in the same way. So the vendor and the user, the merchant and the user are connected by a common app which is installed by many people. So that's how we figured out. Uh, so Telegram is one of the open source apps and they have an open API. Uh, so we figured out one bot. Uh, we, we created one bot and we started uh, taking complaints from the users. So today, I, I, I'll uh, discuss how to create a bot, how to uh, send uh, requests, and how to store the information from collected from the users on the server. Um, for that, uh, I think I'll share the screen. You can actually increase the font size a little bit. Easier to read. Yeah, this is my website. Oh, control plus. Yeah, that will still work. Yeah. Thank you. It's visible, right? Yes. That's my website. You can visit it at kandikiran.in. And I'll share the screen. requirement is Python so check the Python version it should be at least 2.7 and one of the library we are going to use is Python telegram bot so it's available here so this is the bot we'll be using to create a, a automated rep uh, replies to the users so the requirements here is pip. So you know, in order to install pip, you need to use this command. Since pip, pip is already there, it says it's already in the newest version. Then pip install, and also you need virtual environment. So Python virtual environment is also already installed. So we will be creating our virtual environment. So what virtual environment does is basically it will create a clone of your Python installation so in, into one of the folders uh, where you will be working on so that you will be uh, having same, uh, you, you, you can keep track of your packages and you you can collaborate with others also so and also you can have different versions of the same library at, at for different projects and so in order to activate your virtual environment we need to use the uh, activate command so when so in order to confirm that you are in the virtual environment you can see uh, your virtual environment name in the parentheses before your username So once you are inside the virtual environment, you need to install Python Telegram bot. Yeah. 
you need to install python telegram bot and uh, we also be using a flask from uh, flask server to uh, relay our uh, data received from the users to the server so pip install flask So when you type pip phrase, you know uh, what all packages have been installed. So we have flask and these are the recursive uh, requirement from the file flask and two important the flask and the python telegram bot. So we will be writing our first telegram bot. So yeah, you can open your favorite editors. So in order to see the debugging messages, we will need a logger. <coughs> so it's logging. So we need to give the format here. Now once you're done with this, so in the previous version of the library we used to have telegram.bot where we give the token. So uh, now the library has been updated and we have an updater which all has the uh, calls, some, something like we have uh, these functionalities. So you can call updated or get me updated or send message for message and all these functions are written with <coughs> updater class now so that it, it's easy to uh, have uh, your encapsulation and less cluttered uh, way of writing them updater just ask, ask a question I mean, did you have to set up an account with uh, with the telegram first before you do this or yeah we, ha we, need, we need to have an account on the telegram okay. So your credentials for that will be something including this. Yeah. So actually, uh, there is a web interface for Telegram. You can use it here. Web dot Telegram dot org. So this is the project I do, and I can create it on smaller. So in order to create your account, you can go to. You can directly go to web dot Telegram dot org. It will ask you for your phone number. You need to pin, uh, give your phone number. You will get one time uh, password. So once you are in, you can use it either through your app or web interface. But if you have more than one, so you have to have more than one. So it's tied to the phone that you're using, right? So you cannot have a second one or a third one. No, you can create bots. But for, just for bots you can use this. You, can, you can use this bot father. Oh, okay. I see. okay. So this is, there is something called a bot father where you can create bots. So I'll show you. Uh, in the, or, okay, I'll show you here. So, you know, if you, if you have used the Telegram bot LA, you can see this console. So this is how a bot look like in Telegram. And to the bot to generate in the okay, so I'll delete this next time. So this is how the welcome screen for any bot will be like. So when you enter a bot for the in uh, your search bar there, you can see this screen something like this. And 
if you press start it will give you all the commands and options which it has and now uh, if i want to create a new bot i go for new bot all right a new bot how are we going to call it please choose the name for your bot say fossa asia that is my bot and good now let's choose your name use name for your bot it must end in bot like this for example so whatever name you give you have to append it with bot or underscore bot so let's say um fossa asia So I don't want to take up the namespace. So if you want to create a fossa issue bot, so that you can create it. I want to just include TG. TG means te Telegram workshop. So I'm going to give this name. Let's see if it's not taken up. Yeah, it's not taken up. So done. Congratulations. And you get a token here. So you need to you need to notify, take care of this token, save it somewhere, or you can get it again, maybe later. Uh, you can generate a new token in case you forgot it. So you can use slash token command. <coughs> and you can cancel your bot you can revoke permissions you can set name description all there are many options available here you can go go through that and set commands so we will we'll come again to this topic in set commands and for now i will take the token from here and So what basically it does is, uh, updater will look for any updates from the user. So if user sends a message, you get a you get an update. That is an update for the bot. So the bot bot keeps on checking in intervals, say 0.1 second or 110 milliseconds like that. And uh, using that, it will again. So based on the command it sends, it it will run some handler. So it's the same event handling mechanism here. So we uh, we will start with a basic <coughs> function. So we have. So I'm going to write one uh, function where, if we send a command like start, when you have, you, have, you might have seen when we when the welcome screen has come, I have pressed the button start. So when we press that button start, what should happen? So I'm going to print, and also. So. In this, when we send a message, we need to take care of to whom we are replying. So we get updates from many users. So the bot can be used by many users. So each chat has a unique ID. So we have to reply to that specific unique ID. So we need to pa send that parameter. Set the parameter as update dot message dot chat ID and the message. So message is text. Hi, I am. And now, say data dot so command name is start, and I'm assigning that start command to this method. Now keep pulling it. So this is our basic script for making a small start uh, telegram automated bot. Now I'm going to What's the default with the number of times it checks? 0 0.1, 100 milliseconds. And will they throttle it in case you want? Yeah, you can, you can change that speed. So will, will the other side, will, will the telegram throttle it in case? I don't think so. Telegram has horizon, they have scaled the servers, so they don't have any throttling issues. But that can be a denial of service attack. They can be actually. So if you if we keep on requesting, and I have been using the bot. So sometimes I have been kicked out. Like after one or two hours of continuous uh, updates, pulling updates, I have been kicked out sometimes. So I think we need to use some cron job or something again here to keep that running forever.
what dispatcher does is so every uh, telegram bot uh, we have some event handling mechanism right so dispatcher we can use it to assign your commands and say if you have so in routing in web applications you have 404 handlers you have controllers to route so similarly you have your dispatcher where unknown commands can be handled where echo commands can be handled or where you can have your own specified commands and inline queries so we will go to inline queries next so dispatcher is used to basically handle your message uh, set your uh, handlers so we have added uh, telegram handler so it says uh, this is the logger so telegram updater debug mode has started and entering the set web so it, it goes to the api.telegram.org slash bot slash your token so it authenticates itself and it starts pulling itself now so if we go here go back here we have created a bot now we go to the bot so since we haven't set any description or any about text or any help text we won't get anything just the start token so click on the start So you have got a message saying, "Hi, I am Pasha Tijipur." So this is basically your start method being executed, and we have written print hello. Let's go back to console and watch, see, look at what happening there. So here it says, so as I said, it keeps on pulling. It checks for updates. If any get, uh, if it gets any update, then it goes to goes to the particular handler and executes. So here, uh, entering uh, before entering send message, so it, it it has got one update object. The update object <coughs> has been retrieved. In that, uh, it has seen the start command. So it goes to entering send message. We got whole information of the bot, say possession TG bot, and from where it, the request has originated. So my username is Krantikinum01, and my name, first name, last name, type. So it's a private account, not a public account, and ID. So this is the chat ID. And date and the message ID. So again, there's no message, so it keeps on pulling and says there are no updates found. So let's stop this. Go back. So at this point, your bot is uh, a public bot. Yeah, it's a public bot. Any can so anyone can actually connect with now. Yeah, you can go to web. Telegram. and so okay. While you're testing and building this, is there a way to say I'm not ready yet? I want to just Private first before I is there an option when you start this that allows I you think to have a there is one in the bot further where you can set option because you may be in a debugging mode. So you have something called set privacy here. What messages does your bot see in groups and uh, what its presence like? It can be under testing mode or it can be public or private. Only the ones who have the link or the username of the bot can access it. And actually, since we are automating everything, we can use actually tokens to talk to each other. Like, if a user has to talk to the bot, send a token. Then the bot authenticates you. Then you can have uh, services available from the bot. So let's write one more echo bot, where we send some message and it echoes. OK, and one more thing. So if you look, we have written a hello world in that. So this is hello world printed here. That that is not part of the debugger. So this is just a print from print command coming from the Python interpreter. So for your eco bot, so for any other for the start command you don't have any arguments. If you give an argument it will be from your URL. So say you have any bot has URL something similar to this web.telegram.org at the rate your bot name slash if you uh, if you give something like a get parameter that can be taken as an argument here so in your start you can retrieve it as an argument then you can set say uh, if some user is giving my name is uh, x or y you can get the name from there. so for ecobot um, I'm going to take a text I think I need to 
download this screen. So let's try it. what message handler does is so any message you send it will be it can be uh, handled by this function so whatever fun uh, method you give it will be handled by that so any message you type without any commands say, say if you do not give any slash equal slash something this method is going to take care of that you don't need to give an argument here so since we are taking the text whatever is entered so we just need to echo the text received by the updater so the text received is so what updater receives is it, it receives a message object which is a json string so if you go back to telegram api you can i will show you the json string how, how the format is like it has uh, the format is like this it has from and first name all the user details and also the date message id in here we have message of text so we are uh, we are passing the same message back to it so if i say slash echo which is not a command yet which we did not write slash echo hello world so this should basically give us back the same slash echo hello world back not just hello world which one same one. I'm not able to write it. It's for Asia TG underscore board. Yeah, but it says uh, waiting for connection. We have to accept something. Nothing, nothing. You can actually. Are you, is this still running? It's just we didn't kill it off this time. Are you still it's running? It's still running. It's still running in the back. It's running. I think you can send a message maybe. Uh, are you able to find it on the. Yeah, I'm able to find it. But I yeah, Sudish has sent it one. I got it. It's F O S S A S I A T G underscore board. I'm trying to do a secret. Secret chat. Uh, with the bots, it's not possible. Yeah, Arish Pillai has also. Yeah.
if you give any random command, it says sorry command not found. So that is so it is similar to your handle underscore four not four function or uh, any Django you are if you have used Django or Flask or any other web application, you might have written a root where you handle your four not four address. So this is similar to that. Any command which is not rejected with the uh, pre-registered bots or commands, it will throw an error saying command not found. So let's convert some text to cap and return it, capitals. Um, so we will take an argument here. <coughs> add something you need to add the relevant this uh, handler so we call it caps and we'll make it caps got a reply from for make it caps so this is the argument we have taken and it has converted into capitals and if you want to throw some html Using HTML, we are trying to make a bold output. So, if you give some fossil shape, you throw bold uh, argument. So, what you, if you say fossil shape here, so it will have B tags, and we should be able to see that as strong. Let's try. <laughs>
So this is how you get bold letters. So you, you can use anything in HTML. So very few syntaxes like strong italics and font size you can play around. You can even send emojis. Such in the library, there is no validation, so you need to use validators library. You can maybe check the message size. So that's entirely up to the robot itself to size. Yeah, and uh, in Telegram you have video upload limit of 50 MB. So even if someone someone sends your file, you can know the file header length and check the length of the payload you are getting. And if you if you think it is correct, then only receive. Or don't down. So this is the uh, emoji. These are the emojis available for the Telegram board. You can use any of this. So let's say if you want to use ant. We give telegram dot emoji dot and here. I'm not sending any argument, I just want to see if it's working. I got an emoji back. I'm just send a photo.
how you send your photo. So you can load it from your local disk and using the open command, or you can even specify a URL. Can I specify the URL here or you can specify your if you have to open your file and you send it. The command here is send photo not send message. And you can replace the photo with voice and video so to send video and voice message. Now uh, so till now we have been uh, so there's no command option here. That you can only just type in the messages. So in order to make the user experience better, so we have to go here. And go down to set commands. It will say choose a bot to change the list of commands. Pause Asia TG bot and come. So you need to give some uh, in the specified format here. So what all command do we have? We have start, make it caps, make it bold, emoji and photo. You don't need to specify start its default, make it caps. And Telegram doesn't accept any capital letters in your commands. So all should be in small small case and no other special characters. You can use one, two windows. So there's no way to make this command like whatever. So uh, this bot for, for father has, has no automated. So it, it's on a telegram and maybe there in a couple of updates you'll get there. Maybe they will release an API for this also. something like a command uh, slash here. So when you click on this, you get all the options. So the emoji. It doesn't do uh, map a hit uh, prediction as to what the report is typing. It does. Say if you if you have make it, right? So it does it does predictions. Thing. For the commands only. Not only for the commands. But if you didn't define the command just now, oh, you already defined it, so you should delete it. So now we'll try to get data from the user and save it on a different server. So, so whenever a user comes to a bot, so what businesses require is you want to know who has come to you so that you can contact them later back, either through Telegram or different means of communication. So let's try to build uh, a feedback box <coughs> for this workshop, say. And yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be using a flash server for that. So I'll be creating a file in the same directory. Call it sorted up here. Basic flash server. For doing that, from plasma to plasma, to
If you have built a web application, you might be having something called a login attempt. So whenever a user tries to log in, you record it. So we will have a start attempt here. Whenever a user clicks on the start button, we will record it. And this is recorded where? This is recorded on a separate database. So this is a different server. So the script keeps on running. It checks for the updates from the user, that is a bot. And it sends a request to this server whenever the user connects to that. Is there a sysadmin mode for this, uh, for the bot assistant administrator mode for the bot that you can check, you know, like historical performance, how many users have library so we I don't think we have installed request library so we install request library Retrieve the username as Okay, got it. 
It's an object. You can't send them an object. You can't run that question.
Basically, the ones which I am trying right now is not working. So previously, I have created one bot. So I'll show. I'll be showing the example from that. So this is the false bot which I created yesterday night. So when you press start, what it does is, uh, we take the username, and this is the text return, and we send a request to this flash server with start uh, return, and we send the parameter username, chat ID, and time. So this is basically the log which we need to store. And when if we if we have received a particular response, then send the text message as I uh, it is a successful response. Or say our flash server is down, then we have to say that our server is down. Please try again later. So on the server side, uh, if you see the console, so these are so on this there has been a post request sent from our uh, Telegram bot. Say we have a 200 and that means a success, and that post request had a username. So from the bot, it has been sent Kranjikan01 and the chat ID and the time. So this is basically how you log uh, create records of the user. So similarly, you can send any parameter, any argument taken by the user, say text something or some text has been given. Send it to the server, store it on server, or analyze whatever you want to do. Or on the server, you can search on different or you can use another API to use with that. Think, Sudish? Yeah, I guess you can close down. <coughs> Thanks.